God, as we continue our Lenten journey, open these scriptures to us and reveal yourself to us through Christ our Lord. Amen. On the census form this week, I noticed there was a question about whether you have a tap with drinkable water in your home. I realised how blessed we are in the vicarage. I added them up and we've got no less than five taps with drinkable, lovely, fresh water in the house. Sometimes it's easy to take drinkable water for granted. If you've ever travelled overseas, you'll know exactly what I mean. They estimate that in London, 11 people have had a shower in the water um, before you drink it. And, it. and it really tastes like it too. Deep down, we all have basic thirsts. I'm not talking about a physical thirst for water. That's really important, obviously. But once we have that need fulfilled, then there's other thirsts that begin to kick in as well. Bernard Levine, in his book Life's Great Riddle, describes the thirst like this. Countries like ours are full of people who have all the material comforts they desire. Together with such non-material blessings as a happy family, and yet they lead lives of quiet and sometimes noisy desperation. Inside them, they understand that there is a hole, and however much food and drink they pour into it, however many motor cars and TV sets they stuff it with, however many well-balanced children and loyal friends they parade around the edges of it, it aches. It aches. There are four aches or thirsts which I want to talk about today, and I believe they dominate human nature wherever and whenever human beings like you and me are found. The first is a thirst for purpose or meaning in our lives. Then there's a thirst for eternal life. There's a thirst for a moral code to guide our lives. And finally, a thirst for community, connectedness with other people. Today's gospel is remarkable on about 20 levels, all at the same time. Jesus is at Jacob's well, and for countless generations this spot has provided the people of God with water. Bishop David Coles once told us about a retreat he was on in the Holy Land, and they gathered around Jacob's well, and they all said a prayer about life-giving water. Um, they lowered a bucket, they drew out water, they all had a drink, they went home and they had chronic diarrhoea. Anyway, Jesus is in Gentile country, and he sits down remarkably in the middle of the day and talks with a Samaritan woman. Now, in his society in his day, men would literally not be seen dead with a woman in public, particularly a Samaritan woman. They risked impurity, and there was a whole, whole lot of bathing they had to do to get their purity back again, and they risked losing their reputation through gossip. They certainly wouldn't have allowed a woman from Samaria to talk with them. And this one was particularly dodgy because she'd had four husbands to start with. You can hear the desperation in the disciples' voices when they discover what he's up to. But Jesus doesn't talk just about the weather. This isn't a have a nice day, isn't it beautiful weather sort of chat. This is a deep theological conversation. Jesus allows this person to have her own opinion and he allows her to change his opinion as well. In simple terms, he treats her as an equal. As a result, she moves in her thinking. She's drawn from exclusion to inclusion. First she sees him as a man, then as a prophet, then by the end of the reading, he see, she sees him as the Messiah, the promised of God. Then she goes on to become the very first missionary, telling everybody else about Jesus in her village. It all has to do with thirst. I believe that people thirst for purpose in their lives. 
the woman at the well all those years ago, in Jesus found a new purpose for her life. We can have all the material benefits of a first world country. We can have flat screen TVs that cover one wall of the living room. But our lives can still feel hollow. They can still feel like they have no purpose. Jesus, at the very deepest level, provides us with purpose and meaning for our lives. No longer are our lives all about us. Jesus satisfies us with a moral code, sometimes called the golden rule. Treat others as you would like to be treated. And it works really well if you're thinking about doing something and you think, now would I like someone to do that to me, becomes a very effective way um, to filter our actions and our behaviour. Without a basic moral code, we become just economic units. Without a basic moral code, there's nothing to stop us wanting to just rip people off for our own benefit. I came across an Irish prayer um, as we approached St. Patrick's, it might be appropriate. Dear God, turn our enemies so they turn the hearts of our enemies so they love us. If that doesn't work, turn their ankles so we can outrun them. Jesus satisfies our thirst for community. The church is the only organisation that I can think of where there's no criteria to join. There's no charge. You can be any race, you can be young and old, you can be poor, you can be rich, you can be whatever you like. Everybody is welcome in the house of God. Everything else I can think of depends on some link with the organisation and often has a fee to get in the door. We are made in the image of God, the Holy Trinity. The Trinity is a community of love. So in order to live well, we need to be connected. We need communities of love. The great infectious killer disease in our community is not COVID or cancer, but loneliness. So many people are lonely. So many have no family, and if they do, they're someplace else in the world. The family that Jesus started, the church, is to be a family that cares deeply for one another. It's to be a family for those with no family. It's to be an extension of family for those that have one. And Jesus satisfies our thirst for eternal life. Remember sitting, I have the privilege of sitting at the bedside of a lot of people who die. I remember one person said, there has to be more to it than just this. Jesus promises to the woman at the well a spring of water that will bubble up inside her and bring her to eternal life. Eternal life is what we're talking about at a funeral when the priest says, and I said this twice on Wednesday, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life. Four great thirsts, meaning and purpose, eternal life, a moral code, a community, a family, some people to be connected with. All these things bring us what Jesus promised to bring us, life in all its abundance. Our first hymn, one of my favourite hymns, put it so well in the second verse, I can't put it any better than it did, so I'll read the second verse of our first hymn. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Behold, I freely give. The living water, thirsty one, stoop down and drink and live. I came to Jesus and I drank of that life-giving stream. My thirst was quenched. My soul revived, and now I live in him.